I've been flying for 37 years, 17,000 hours. I had 11 years in the Air Force where we regularly, because of the three-dimensional manoeuvres we were doing in and out of cloud, we were regularly getting ourselves disoriented. So we were used to the conflict of the vestibular the system and the instruments, and, and that was common day stuff for us. Um, all the training, all the hours and experience I had didn't help me one iota when it came to sitting in the Barani chair. The sensation of rolling and tumbling in that chair was real and there is no experience, nothing you can do, no course you can do to take away that rolling sensation. You just have to understand it exists, live with it and uh, respond to it, which means you follow the instruments. Okay, the Barani chair managed to fool Richard's brain because he didn't have any visual stimulus to allow him to orientate and 80% of our orientation is via our vision. So then the body had to rely on the position of the hair cells within the cochlea and the semicircle canals. So when we first started moving Richard, he was going at less than two degrees per second. So therefore the fluid inside his ears was not shifting. So therefore the hair cells inside the ear didn't shift either. So he felt like he was stable and he wasn't moving. Then once we sped it up, it got greater than two degrees per second and the fluid shifts inside the ear and that makes the hair cells move in the direction that he was moving. So he indicated that with his thumbs. But after a while, if the speed stays constant, then the fluid will settle and the hair cells will come back up to upright. So therefore he felt like he wasn't moving anymore and that's when he moved his thumbs up to say he didn't feel he was moving. Then when he was stopped suddenly, there is a fast deceleration of the fluid and so therefore it moves much more dramatically and it shifted the hair cells in the direction that it was moving because of the stop. So he therefore indicated that he was going the other way when he was actually stopped because that's what his ears were feeling. They felt that they were moving because the hair cells were moving because the fluid had been forced to move because of the sudden stop. Um, for pilots when they're flying, when that happens, that often the way to work out whether they're actually moving or not is to check their instruments and to see whether the altimeter has changed, whether the speed has changed and they need to believe the instruments over what their ears are telling them. And I'm starting to think I'm not turning. Keep going a bit longer. All right, I don't think I'm turning now. Okay. And head up, open eyes. You okay? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, my, my head is rolling, it, it, my body thinks I'm rolling this way. And, um, all the senses of, from vision says that I'm sitting still does not match with my vestibular system. It is totally out of whack. Now it's coming back. So my eyesight's overpowering this vestibular and now I've got it back. But um, there was a sense of disbelief. If I had not had the visual senses and I'd lifted my head up the way I just did, yep. I would have easily rolled the aircraft inverted to keep what I thought was the normal attitude. Things pilots can do to minimise getting spatially disorientated is A, be aware of it and believe that it can happen to you no matter how experienced or unexperienced you are, it, it will happen to everybody. The other thing that you need to do pre-flight is to make sure you know what the conditions are and that you're capable of flying in those conditions. So if you think there's going to be cloud or you might be flying into dusk or dawn and you're not instrument rated, you shouldn't fly in that. Or if the weather starts to get bad, you should land, you should turn around, you shouldn't try and push on. If you are instrument rated but you haven't flown for a while or kept your currency up, just because you have a stamp that says you passed six months ago but you haven't practiced it in six months, you will have got rusty so you will not be performing as well as you would have done. Other things to be need aware of is that you are more likely to become spatially disorientated if you have alcohol on board because that thins the fluid down in your ears so it will become much more sensitive to the movement. It will also hangs around up to 32 to 48 hours after your last drink so it takes a while for the fluid to thicken back up again. Also, if you're hungover, apart from the fluid, but you also won't be performing as well. Um, if you're hypoglycemic, so there's low blood sugar, then you are much more likely to become disorientated. So you need to make sure that you've eaten six hours before you fly at the maximum. Also, if you have taking medications, some medications will also make you more prone to dizziness 
all make that your blood pressure can't respond. So you need to check what the side effect of the medications are. Has your dami cleared you to fly with those medications? Also medications that you can't get over the counter or if you're taking illicit drugs, all of those will make you more inclined to spatial disorientation. And if you're psychologically stressed, if you are still thinking about that argument you had with your partner before you left the house, then you're not going to be able to recognise you're becoming disorientated quickly enough or be able to problem solve as easily as you normally would do. So you're much more likely to move into the type three or the unrecognised.